Hi, I'm Charlie Dutar. Uh, who knows what twinkling is? Everybody twinkle. Also known as spirit fingers or jazz hands, uh, twinkling is American Sign Language for applause, and it's also a hand signal that grassroots organizations around the world are now using to indicate approval. I was at an Occupy Boston General Assembly a couple of months ago, and a proposal came up for a resolution that American-style democracy is a sham, and that we wanted to replace it with the General Assembly model. Um, so leaving aside for a moment the question of whether we could run this country on General Assemblies, what makes the Occupy General Assembly so different from that other General Assembly across the pond, uh, the United Nations? Um, well, Occupy mobilized hundreds of thousands of people with an entirely horizontal organizing model. It has no presidents, no representatives, no figureheads. Brought people together and gave them a strong sense of power and accomplishment and purpose. And they changed the international conversation on income inequality. But the key to accomplishing all of this within the General Assemblies was structure. Structure provides a kind of a social algorithm for how to run meetings. And it includes all these details like twinkling. Um, Robert's Rules of Order is an older and still useful way to structure in-person meetings, but what would happen if we tried to run a meeting with no structure at all and no rules? Any guesses? That's what happens. <laughs> so in the absence of structure, we bring in the biases that we already have, hierarchies, racial and gender inequalities, dominant personalities, people that are comfortable talking, and this starts to drive the conversation. And people have realized this for a long time. In the 1970s, um, feminists started describing structuralist meetings as tyrannical. Um, and it turns out, in order to have an effective horizontal movement, you need a structure that can help enforce equality. And consensus is one such structure. Consensus is just the basic old idea that instead of taking a majority vote, you keep on working until you have something that everyone can live with. And this is a flowchart of a structured formal consensus process, very similar to the one that Occupy uses. Um, but if we wanted to scale this model and allow more people to use it, we want to bring it online. I mean, our communities are online, our time is limited, our actions are global, and we need ways to extend dem democratic participation with the groups that we're already working in, like boards of directors and community organizations. So why can't we just take all the offline structures and put them online? Um, well, it's, it's not quite so simple as that because communication works completely differently online. You can't twinkle online. You don't get the nonverbal communication. Um, in fact, communication online works completely differently. Um, trying to get understanding in a group online is like trying to talk on the moon over a two-way radio. It's very hard to tell if people understand what you've said. It's very hard to build trust. Um, and so we need different social algorithms to structure our meetings online. Here are three big questions for building consensus tools online. How do we reach understanding without physical presence? How do we represent our existing groups like boards of directors or community organizations online? And how do we ensure that we're going to have full participation and accessibility? So first on understanding, um, one thing that doesn't give understanding is just voting in forums. So this is Reddit's comment scoring algorithm. It's really useful for telling what's hot or popular but it doesn't help build understanding or trust. Another example of what isn't understanding is petitions, such as this one from whitehouse.gov. We demand a vapid, condescending, meaningless, politically safe response to this petition. If you want to have a consensus process, you need more interactivity than that. You need more understanding and trust. The second big question, how do we structure online groups to match our offline groups? An online community is going to function very differently if it's an anonymous horde than if it's a small group of people that you already know in the in-person world. And a lot of the communities that we have online, things like Reddit or Metafilter, um, are anonymous hordes. We want online tools that are going to work for our, our existing community associations, boards of directors, affinity groups that we're already working with. Um, most of the existing e-democracy tools aren't going to do that. Um, the third big challenge is participation. So there's this great paradox in democratic platforms that if you build it and they don't come, it's not actually a democratic platform. Um, and this is especially true if you're dealing with smaller groups. If five people out of 20 people in your group aren't using the tool, there's no way to have a consensus process like that. So to overcome this, we're trying to, to design this with a participatory design model. So we want to work directly with groups and have them take a key role in the design process from the earliest stages so we can get things that they can actually need and get everybody on board. We've also found that it's not enough to just build an online tool. You have to educate people in the offline world about how to effectively use the tool in the online world. So these are a couple of games that we've developed that groups can use to educate themselves about online communication. So in summary, consensus depends on structure. Online is different. Groups matter. Participatory design might provide 
an answer, and everything we have so far is available on intertwinkles.org. And I'd love to talk with anyone about this stuff. Thank you.